Hello everyone. I'm Chandan from Juniper Networks. I work with uh, OpenStack as a firewall service developer. And uh, today I'm going to discuss about OpenStack as a application platform. So we all know that OpenStack has created this uh, great platform for uh, infrastructure as a service. If you ask any uh, user of OpenStack or any administrator, he will tell you about how great OpenStack is in providing all the uh, cool features in the infrastructure uh, domain. It has really helped users to move on to a uh, paradigm when they can look at infrastructure as APIs rather than uh, uh, thinking about uh, acquiring uh, services like uh, new servers, storage, they can currently start looking at API calls and that problem has been solved. So from the point of view of OpenStack, it has already provided the end user with a great infrastructure as a service platform. So if you, uh, if you want to look at OpenStack, uh, you can uh, and differentiate with a conventional uh, uh, platform, like a hardware platform, the most striking difference that OpenStack brings to the, uh, to the platform is like uh, the elasticity of your infrastructure. As an end user, you can ask for uh, additional resources when your demands grow, and as and when your demands come down, you can ask, ask for the resources to be uh, taken back. So this is a great and powerful feature OpenStack provides. But this is uh, the problem with OpenStack has been that it has focused too much on the infrastructure. So what I'm going to try to tell today is about how all these powerful features of OpenStack can be used as an advantage by an application developer. OK, so uh, first of all, uh, let's look at how the application paradigm is different from infrastructure. So if you look at applications, the applications are more uh, tuned towards uh, thinking like what kind of resources these applications will have. They will think in terms of uh, memory, uh, CPU usage, storage, network, bandwidth allocation. These are, the, these are the things that affect the running of an application. While all of these features are actually controlled by the infrastructure provider. Just like OpenStack, OpenStack can provide you APIs for controlling all this infrastructure. So we see there is a gap between what the application is actually wanting to use and what the OpenStack is providing. Although both of them have the capability of one guy having, having the infrastructure, he is able to provide you the infrastructure based on API calls and the application wanting to use those infrastructure pieces, but they are not actually communicating with each other. So the focus of my talk today is how do I make my application take advantage of this infrastructure pieces dynamically. So uh, to, uh, to give you some example, let's say we have some application that we want to run on OpenStack and that application is able to dynamically ask for resources or the application is able to provide statistics of its usage or uh, the kind of uh, bottleneck it is facing directly it can provide that kind of information and submit it to OpenStack. And from the OpenStack point of view, it can uh, look at the application's usage of the resources and come up with a better uh, strategy of deploying those applications. So it's a win-win for both the situation. So uh, let's move on to the next part of it. So here I'm talking about uh, thinking from an application's developer's point of view. So move to a, move to a uh, more focused uh, application-centric thinking and uh, let the application developer itself uh, request you for more resources or request you for uh, resources that uh, the application finds is lacking. Instead of a third party uh, monitoring the application as, as a process and asking for those resources. The other things that the infrastructure can help the application developer uh, with is the discovery of applications. So 
most of the applications in today's uh, world are uh, becoming more and more complicated. They have multiple processes running and most of the time these processes need to discover each other. So the way we can, uh, the infrastructure provider, ca provider can help this is if the infrastructure itself is able to keep track of what kind of resources uh, the infrastructure is running and when, when a new application comes to this infrastructure, he can query this uh, uh, the registry of uh, information and get to know all the other applications that are running on, say, OpenStack. The other kind of uh, uh, situation may be creation of clusters. So uh, there are a lot of situations where uh, an application can have replicate, uh, replicated instances or application itself is made out of uh, smaller components. So all these components can be part of a group of application and, uh, and, the, and it can behave like a single entity. And the infrastructure itself can help in creating that group of application. And in such a complicated uh, environment of application, it is always a problem to configure the application properly. So in this complex, uh, uh, complex uh, interconnectivity of application, there is uh, this infrastructure is one piece that can see all this application and provide a seed to uh, do the configuration correctly. Okay, to, uh, to uh, accomplish all of this, the first step that we need to do is to uh, look at the application as a resource itself. So today in OpenStack, we look at VMs as a resource or a container as a resource to help the application developer or to, uh, to understand the requirement of the application. First, we have to model the application as an OpenStack resource. So, uh, and, and the definition of application itself can, can be very fluidic because an application can be one instance of a process running on one uh, server or it can be multiple processes which communicate with each other and the whole group of process forms an application. So uh, the other thing that, uh, that is required is uh, this application uh, be uh, configured through some kind of a API. Now uh, OpenStack is uh, well known for providing uh, REST based uh, APIs and uh, we can think of uh, the application APIs also as a uh, REST based endpoint and it can, it can obviously uh, keep track of the applications that are running as a registry. It can, uh, from the OpenStack point of view, it can uh, till today, uh, if you look at OpenStack, it, uh, the maximum granularity it can look at is maybe a VM or a container. But going forward, if you, if you make application as a, as a resource, then uh, the application developer itself uh, will be able to provide you information about what kind of applications are running on OpenStack. And uh, from the cloud provider uh, point of view, you have a better control and uh, understanding of what kind of workloads are being run on your uh, platform. So uh, let's look at uh, uh, the use case of dynamic resource allocation. So as I told, uh, one of the uh, major advantages of using a cloud-based plat platform as uh, your infrastructure is the elasticity of the platform. As the demand increases, you, you get to uh, acquire more resources, and when the demand goes down, you can uh, revert it back. So uh, how do I, uh, as an application developer, take advantage of this? So uh, if we have an application, uh, if we have an API which, which uh, is able to track this uh, application, that API can also take input from the, from the application and say, uh, understand the needs of the application in terms of, say, extra storage or bandwidth or, say, um, policy in terms of security uh, to be applied. And, uh, and then there can be a two-way communication between the infrastructure and the application. If you contrast that with uh, today's situation, the applications are actually started with a static uh, environment 
and then uh, the application uh, are totally on the mercy of the environment as, as to what kind of resources are available to it. And finally, uh, uh, if you want to do a scale up of the application, you have to depend on an external agent which has limited uh, insight into the kind of uh, activity the uh, application itself is doing. So, uh, compare it with a situation where the application developer himself and has built in this uh, intelligence into the application to provide uh, fine grained data uh, about how uh, resource utilization is going on. So, one of the core um, core principles of uh, getting into this kind of a situation is to do a self monitoring by the application. So, self monitoring data by application will form the basis of all of this dynamic resource allocation or monitoring uh, uh, and uh, triggering of uh, uh, scale up of application or scale down of application. Similarly, uh, uh, on the dynamic scale down, uh, the dynamic scale down is actually a bit of a tricky problem because uh, in, uh, you have to actually look at the data over a period of time to understand when actually the uh, application data is, uh, I mean the demand is, uh, you are expecting the demand to come down because there is no, uh, there is no, um, uh, uh, just like in, in case of uh, scaling up where you look at the demand is going up and immediately you can trigger a scale up. There is no direct uh, way of telling that okay at this point of time just because I saw a little bit of uh, demand, demand going down I should uh, scale down my, uh, my infrastructure. Instead what you have to look at is a lot of historical data and then come up with some trends that uh, okay during this period of the day uh, and during this uh, this time of the week we, we will see a little less uh, uh, resource consumption or a little less uh, uh, demand for my service and depending on the trend I can scale down my uh, my infrastructure. So, the application infrastructure can uh, actually help in generating those trends looking at the self monitoring data that the application would have provided. Now, uh, I have talked about dynamic uh, allocation of resources directly by the application. So, it has uh, both sides to it because when you, uh, you cannot just uh, ask, uh, I mean as an application developer you, you cannot just ask for any amount of resources, there has to be some limit. So, the uh, one of the ways to restrict the amount of data that, uh, that or restrict the amount of resources that can be asked by your application is uh, by say uh, writing a policy or uh, giving certain amount of quota to your application and depending on. Um, uh, on the on the quota you can ask for a certain amount of uh, uh, amount of resource but if you, if your resource uh, requirement are going beyond that quota maybe uh, the the best way to deal with it is to create a log uh, in the application uh, monitoring uh, self monitoring and that log can uh, act as a um, as a means of tuning your uh, quota uh, in the future allocations Okay, so uh, depending on what we have talked till now uh, about application being a resource and uh, creating statistics of the application or self monitoring of, uh, of the application and uh, requirement for dynamic allocation of uh, resources directly by the application. Uh, we can look at some simple uh, APIs that will be required uh, to get to that point. So, the uh, I have put down certain uh, APIs here. We have the application uh, instance creation uh, which is uh, which is the first API and then I have the stats. So, stats is like self monitoring data that the application can gather and put, uh, put it to open stack and then we have uh, dynamic resource allocation. So, this is another uh, REST API that can be used to allocate or ask for more resources. And finally, we have a uh, quota API that API will be uh, admin only and the admin can decide on what kind of quota to provide to an application. 
Now, uh, one of the interesting thing about uh, about this API is how do we how do we make this uh, API accessible? So, to make this API accessible, we we don't want to put any kind of uh, special uh, requirement on the application. So, uh, first of all, it has to work for any and all kind of application, and secondly, uh, uh, it should work in ideally all uh, all kind of environment. And uh, the third thing to keep in mind is this application uh, specific APIs are mostly used by, uh, uh, is going to be used by the applications. It's not for the end user. So mostly it will be restricted to say access through the VM. So depending on this uh, use case, uh, what, I, uh, what I try to do is I try to put a uh, small uh, VOC kind of uh, demo and then uh, uh, to restrict this uh, APIs to, to the VM itself, I have extended the metadata agent uh, to allow this uh, application APIs to be called. So uh, the additional benefit of uh, doing it over metadata uh, agent is like, uh, first of all, the metadata agent uh, endpoint is available to all the applications running within any instance. We don't need any uh, external network uh, to be connected to the uh, VM so that uh, the REST calls can be made directly over the well-known uh, metadata endpoint of 169.254.169.254. And uh, anyway, it, it restricts the usage of this API to the VM instances. Okay, uh, I have a small demo here. Okay, and so uh, the demo starts with uh, creating a simple uh, instance. Uh, so this is uh, well known to everyone. Uh, just to show that we, we don't have any special requirement and anyway, uh, the API calls are based on uh, REST APIs and uh, metadata endpoint should be available to virtually all uh, instances on OpenStack. Although I, I have enabled uh, SSH, uh, this is just for the purpose of demo and to show you that the REST APIs can be called. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, this is the API that I was uh, talking about for creating the application. So if if you look at it, uh, uh, you'll see that I am using the uh, the endpoint that is used by metadata agent, and the metadata service has been extended to understand this uh, application APIs. And to start with, we we start with a uh, blank application. We have no stats. Uh, some uh, currently, I'm using uh, the name of the application as the identifier, and we have some quota config and resources, which uh, which can be uh, tuned later on.
Okay. So, uh, one of the things that uh, I would like to uh, point out here is uh, the definition of application uh, is uh, uh, it is very dynamic actually. So, you can have uh, one application spread across multiple instances or you have multiple applications uh, on, on a single instance. So, uh, in the later uh, slides we will look at how to uh, how to manage the identity of an application. Uh, and uh, I mean how the identity can can survive uh, beyond a reboot or things like that. So, yeah, here you have uh, the service uh, I mean OpenStack managing a list of application and uh, uh, you can obviously think of it as a registry and uh, this kind of a registry can always help uh, the, the tenant to discover other services that uh, that might be running in the uh, in the OpenStack platform. Okay, so here uh, this is this is the API that uh, that we are using to ask for resources uh, to create uh, to ask for dynamic resources for an application. We are basically doing a post request on on this endpoint to uh, let the infrastructure know that uh, this application will be asking for uh, is asking for uh, resource one uh, with a certain kind of value. Uh, so the whole purpose of this uh, demo was just to just to uh, demonstrate that the uh, internal uh, API uh, based on the extension of this metadata service can work as a conduit for the application to uh, work along with uh, OpenStack and uh, take advantage of the elasticity of uh, OpenStack like uh, uh, platform and. Uh, uh, derive the maximum advantage for a application developer. Okay. So, here uh, we can see it in the other use case also where uh, the application can uh, interact with other uh, other components and share configurations uh, across a cluster of uh, or a group of application. So, Coming back to uh, the presentation, so uh, if you look at if you uh, if you looked at that demo, you can uh, you can see that uh, this is the way the application is communicating uh, with other infrastructure pieces. It is using the metadata API endpoint, and the metadata API endpoint has been extended to handle application infra uh, requests. So uh, things like uh, monitoring. Uh, or uh, submission of uh, self monitoring statistics or asking uh, or the application asking for extra resources will be handled by this app infra handler and uh, depending on the kind of request it can either go into a database uh, which helps uh, OpenStack to actually get a better view of what kind of workloads are being run on the infrastructure or it can be a uh, infrastructure API call itself. Uh, which is uh, which is actually being proxied uh, proxied by this app infra handler. Now, uh, 
Now, uh, look at this uh, rest call a bit more closely. Uh, you will see that uh, there are a couple of headers that were part of this uh, rest call. Uh, one was, uh, uh, two of them are well known. I, I mean, uh, they are already part of uh, the request that, uh, app, uh, that a metadata uh, client like a cloud in it or something like that does. So, it has the tenant ID and the instance ID of, uh, uh, of the instance where this application will be running. But the third one is something that we added. Uh, this is uh, to make sure that we identify the application uh, as to which of the application on an instance is actually uh, making this request. So, uh, the password can be something uh, that can be uh, kind of a shared secret be between the infrastructure and uh, the application. And the way to uh, pass on this information to the application can be uh, maybe through the metadata uh, agent itself and it can be one of the key value pair that pa gets passed on to the instance and then the application can pick up this uh, shared secret and uh, start creating its own identity. Uh, the second part is uh, more of the second uh, example. The second example here is uh, about uh, resource allocation. Although I just showed the, uh, the post uh, method on this uh, endpoint. So, we have, uh, I, ha I haven't actually worked on the handler. So, what ideally should happen is uh, once you ask for this resource uh, from the uh, application infra, the infra has to validate uh, if this uh, resource is well within your uh, quota and then uh, use, this, uh, use this request to make a call uh, using something like heat or uh, other client and make those resources available to the um, uh, instance where this application is running. And then it's up to the application to uh, expand its uh, usage of resource. Now, uh, one, of the, one of the problems that we saw with, uh, uh, with the application, uh, multiple application uh, in, a, uh, in a instance or one application spread across multiple instances is how do you identify that uh, that, uh, that uh, it is a single application or uh, uh, multiple applications are running on a single server. So, uh, there are a couple of things that can help in determining uh, the application uh, identity. One is, uh, the, uh, one is the location of the application, uh, the owner of the instance where the application is running. And uh, of course, we have uh, a shared secret between the infrastructure and the application that can be passed over metadata agent, uh, which can help in creating a unique identity for the application. One a few things to keep in mind in case of uh, application identity is like application identity uh, can be a challenge when you have uh, replication of instances for application. Suppose you have a VM which, uh, which you cloned and uh, started, uh, started another copy of it, then you have the same application uh, running on both, uh, both the instances. Or if you, uh, if you uh, try to move your application from one VM to another, or uh, you have uh, uh, reboot kind of a situation where you have rebooted the uh, rebooted the instance and then the application has to reclaim its uh, identity. So, uh, all these are challenges that needs to be solved. Uh, the implication of uh, not providing a uh, strict application uh, identity may be something like uh, security uh, security concern like because you have a application tied to uh, a list of dynamic resources so if an impersonator is actually able to get access to your uh, application identity then he can uh, he can use those resources and uh, uh, similarly uh, if you are using this application infra to push configuration and configure other uh, peers of this application then you will be able to actually uh, influence the configuration of other instances of application.
Okay. So uh, th this is uh, this were the uh, the base use cases that I saw for creating an application uh, infrastructure or application API uh, for OpenStack. But uh, beyond this uh, basic use cases, uh, we can look at some advanced uh, cases. So configuring application is one of those cases where uh, an infrastructure which provides a you know, pro uh, provides a kind of uh, repository of uh, configuration that can be shared by multiple instances uh, can be useful. And uh, it can be the single source of truth for uh, a list of uh, application. And uh, an extended use case for that is if you want to change the, uh, change the configuration of your application across uh, uh, multiple uh, nodes, you can use this uh, infrastructure in such a way that the infrastructure is able to give a notification that uh, certain configuration needs to change for all this list of application. And then uh, the application needs to handle those uh, kind of notification and uh, reload itself. Another, uh, another use case can be a multi-node application. Uh, so multi-node application can mostly be uh, kind of a cluster. So clusters itself can be of two types. One is like uh, multiple instances of the same application running on different nodes uh, for load sharing. Or uh, it's like a, a role-based cluster like where you have multiple instances of the application and each of them uh, actually have a different purpose. So both this situation can, can be uh, helped uh, if, uh, if we support something like an application group. So application group is, uh, is another construct that can be part of uh, this uh, application infra. And uh, the way we do it, uh, at least uh, the way I plan to do it is uh, like uh, create a, a group within the application infra API. And then uh, various application can join this uh, group and share uh, configuration among it, each other. Uh, again, uh, joining this group uh, needs to be authorized and authenticated. Uh, there has to be a group secret uh, that needs to be shared among uh, the group members. And uh, that secret will actually give you access to both the configuration and uh, resource allocation for a group. So for, uh, for a load balanced application, uh, actually uh, application self monitoring can provide a lot of uh, insight into what kind of uh, resource utilization or, uh, or demand that application is currently facing. And uh, over time, uh, uh, a load balancer can look at the data that has been provided by the application and it can uh, do things like pulling out uh, application instance from a, a group of uh, load balanced nodes. And then uh, we can also think of uh, using this application data to uh, schedule uh, the application or the instances in, in such a way that it, uh, it adheres to the policy of uh, high availability of uh, say not, uh, not starting the instance of application on a single node or uh, in a single region. So here are some APIs uh, uh, that can help with this uh, extended use cases. Uh, first one uh, is for uh, storing the config of an application. And the second one, as I told, is uh, about creation of group and then uh, participating in uh, uh, in this group. So to create a group, uh, we can create a group with, uh, with a group ID and then uh, have a sh uh, shared secret that, uh, that gives access to all the instances uh, to uh, be part of this group. And the group can have uh, uh, special configuration which will be shared by uh, group members. And uh, uh, in, in a, a clustering kind of environment, this group uh, can be uh, can be a, a representation of a cl 
cluster. So in summary, uh, what I am proposing is uh, an application specific API. Uh, the advantage of this API is it opens up the infrastructures, uh, uh, infrastructures capability, especially the uh, dynamic uh, scaling and elasticity of the infrastructure, which uh, cloud based environment can provide to the application developer itself. Uh, the developer can decide on uh, the monitoring uh, uh, the key points to monitor for a particular type of application uh, because uh, if if you look at the current situation you uh, the way um, applications get monitored is a very generic way uh, you look at the attributes of a uh, of a process and come to a conclusion whether uh, uh, about the application uh, it is always going to be a better uh, proposal to actually uh, let the application uh, come up with uh, uh, come up with uh, uh, certain certain attributes that can give a better indication of how loaded or how uh, uh, how much the application uh, is healthy. And uh, we talked about uh, application groups uh, for creating clusters and. Uh, and how uh, finally uh, this application APIs uh, can provide OpenStack with uh, finer grain understanding of what is going on in the infrastructure uh, instead of just looking at, uh, at a VM level or at a, a container level to understand uh, the load. Uh, OpenStack like uh, infrastructure can now understand uh, uh, the workload at a application layer. So that's all I wanted to uh, present in uh, today's talk. Uh, so if you have any questions, I can take the questions. Sure. I'm Scott Holton from the New Stack. Uh, about, about a third of the uh, sessions on the OpenStack Summit 6 schedule have the word Kubernetes in it. Okay. I, just, just glancing. Okay. You would hardly think that, that you know, that, that, there for a moment you think we're at KubeCon. Some sessions are exclusively devoted to Kubernetes. What are the advantages to the approach uh, for application management that you are proposing versus uh, an open source orchestrator like Kubernetes or like anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, swarm or maintenance? Okay, so uh, it it goes back to the same same difference like. Uh, if if you if you want to uh, monitor an application uh, from an external point of view maybe an external agent can work for a lot of application it is very generic uh, it can look at the attributes of a process and come up with some value for uh, how loaded that application is or how much the resource utilization of that application is but if you, if you compare it uh, to a very specific kind of uh, uh, metrics that the application designer has uh, thought will be uh, will be influencing the performance of the application it is definitely going to be a better metric to look at uh, when you want to uh, say look at the performance of the application and how uh, how it is uh, how much healthy it is in a in an environment will that application developer necessarily understand how much of Yeah, so uh, this is not a, I mean, you can look at it at, uh, at a different point. Uh, one, one way of looking at it is, yeah, if you, if you are using an agent, you are kind of handing it off to a third party uh, who might be specialized in monitoring and who knows uh, a lot about monitoring of application. But if you want to squeeze out the maximum out of your platform and use uh, a elastic platform to your advantage, then uh, giving a, uh, the application developer that opportunity to actually communicate directly with the, with the infrastructure, I think it gives the application developer a lot of power. Any other questions? Yeah. 
the question. Okay, so unless anyone has uh, any questions, I'm mostly done with it. Uh, actually, I was supposed to present this uh, along with two of my uh, co-presenters. Uh, unfortunately, they could not make it to uh, make the summit. Uh, they are Sriram and uh, Sharath, and I am Chandan. We are all from Juniper Networks, and currently uh, I am involved in uh, Firewall as a Service project in uh, OpenStack Neutron. Thank you.